And this boats, especially the throwing events, produce very large forces over a relatively short period of time. But this resort takes one second. <coughs> what my philosophy is to get regular horsepower in the weight room, and we get specific horsepower by throwing the discus. So we do very little special work in the weight room. That's just the way we do. It's all about what I call performance strength, conventional strength, specific strength, and synergy strength. Performance strength is Olympic lifting and powerlifting. Conventional strength is not to get hurt, get cancer, didn't get a, get a injury for 12 years. He worked with me for 12 years and he was never hurt. We prevent to get hurt. Specific strength is throwing the discus. And symmetry strength is to take care of the body in relation to all muscle groups. What throwing is all about is we throw the discus, we throw a heavy two, we do Olympic lifts and we do power lifts. There is simple original concept. There's nothing to it more than to put it together in a 10 year plan. That's what I'm going to try to tell you how I did. We have to know some basic knowledge about individualization and specificity and how we load the body in relation to what people you have, how we do the volume and intensity, uh, how much are we going to throw, how much are we going to lift, how intensive is, is it going to be, how long are the sessions going to be, how often are we going to lift, how is the rest, and are we going to get something out of it. So the adaptation variation principle, I'm always working with that to adapt to a stimuli and then change it and vary it to get results. It's, it's very hard something to do because of the needs and because of that we are not in charge of everything. I have to adapt everything into a meet schedule. We have to peak at a certain time and that means with huge body like him, he needs to be able to be as strong, as explosive, as fast as possible, mentally strong and technically good. When it, when the final in the Olympics is at five o'clock in the afternoon on that day, that means that the training principles are very important in relation to how you plan. I'm called of some people, Mr. Common Sense because I'm pretty good at using science in relation to what I've experienced and then use common sense in relation to what athletes are working with. So when the theoretical guy that, that want to kill me and say I'm an idiot because I'm letting him do something that they don't like, it's because it's him. It's not because theoretically it's always right. So you as a coach, as a big challenge, you have a living person in your hands. He or she has some kind of favorite things to do. Theoretically you want this, then the science people say this, and then you are somewhere in between as a young coach or a very experienced coach, and you put it together. Some people think that I stand for something that I really don't because they see it on YouTube or something, but it's mostly because I individualize very much the training program, like it says there. Here. The training methods, what in, in here, we have a discus throw. We have to be extremely strong. We have to be big. We have to put on a lot of muscle. Uh, we have to have max strength. We have to have hypertrophy. 
and you have some kind of reps and sets to put together, you have rest, you have intensity. And then you have to take the max strength and the muscle building into an explosive and specific speed of throwing the discus. Then you have to know what is most important. Do you have a big guy? Do you have a shorter guy? Do you have a guy that or a girl that needs to put on muscle? You have to make this decision. You have to you have to kind of diagnose each athlete in relation to their training age and their age, their level, and what is needed in relation to strengthening. And then the training methods you have to lay over and decide, and sometimes that's hard to do. Olympic weightlifting is not only uh, snatch clean and jerk. It's also what I call sit snatch or sit clean or jerk. If you see snatch clean and jerk here is all this. And if we take Daniel, he does a lot of this. He does this, he does this, he does this, and this, and this. So we don't do everything, but it's possible to do all kinds of stuff with Olympic lifting. We never go, do more than five reps of that, and we never do more than five sets of that. Five by five is 25, five by one is one. That means the periodization and planning is all about volume and intensity. How much reps do you do? How much sets do you do? How much kilos or pounds do you have on the bar? And then you calculate that together and you peak when it comes. And sometimes that's very hard to do because at the same time as you are actually doing a volume, you have to compete for your club or for your nation in a meet that is not actually when we want to do it. And then you are actually loaded with weights at the same time as you're going to peak eight weeks later in the Olympic Games or World Championship. So that means that we do three to five sets all year around, more or less, one to five reps, 60 to 100 percent, with rest that is pretty long. And this is just for strength, explosiveness, and speed. And it's uh, more or less used in a certain way for Anya. I use it totally different if you have time. Then the powerlifting is not only squats, bench press, and deadlift. That's the competitive stuff in powerlifting. And what's the difference between powerlifting and Olympic lifting? Olympic lifting is neuromuscular movements uh, that are go through the whole body, and this is more like a pure strength training that makes you very, very strong. Big lifts, big muscle groups, and can be done with deep squats, front squats, one leg squats, half squats, jump squats, step ups, lunges, etc. We do a lot of deep squats. I'm going to tell you why later. We do a lot of sumo deadlift and uh, we do a lot of uh, bench presses and incline uh, dumbbell presses and stuff like that. Training methods in the Olympics lift can go all the way up to 10 to 12 reps because of muscle building. Uh, we don't do that with Daniel because he's big enough. We just need to be very, very strong. But we never do more than five sets there either. Why is that? Because we have discus throwers. This is not the most important thing for us. The most important thing for a tennis player is to play tennis. The most important for a swimmer is to swim. The most important for us is to throw a discus. And we have to be very, very strong. And we have to be very, very fast. And very, very explosive. And the reason for it is the Olympic champion is because of the physical. He's not the best discus thrower that ever lived. He's not the best competitor that ever lived. But he's probably one of the strongest discus throwers that ever lived. 
because of that family of school picked everybody. There is all kinds of stuff. I'm, I'm going to warn you because I'm so old. I'm going to be 62 next month. Don't buy everything that you see on the YouTube. Go to people that are smarter than you and ask them, is there anything new I need to do? Yeah, there's a lot of new stuff. But don't eat it all up. I think that's going to be the main thing. The new generation, the young people here, use the people that do uh, research on strength training. That's what I do. Am I asking anything new? Yeah, a lot of new stuff. What, the, what am I going to use of it? Just this. Maybe one thing. I've tried more or less everything, and I'm I'm called of some people to be the have some barbarian methods, old-fashioned original weightlifting, Olympic lifting, Olymp uh, and powerlifting, the throwing. Why am I using that? It works. That's the reason I'm using it. It works. Are there only other ways to roll? Yes, there are. But don't go too hard into it because it's all about horsepower, it's all about speed. Sports are all about speed. And one of the fastest athletes in the world, and maybe the fastest and most explosive people in the world, are Olympic weightlifters. Then we would be idiots if we wouldn't use that. There's a lot of eccentric work, drop jumps, concentric jumps, concentric throws. I've used all this through the years. Works also. Gives guys like this a lot of injuries because of that, because of their weight. We have a lot of possible variables to change when we do a training program. Reps and sets, load in kilos, pounds, exercise selection, exercise order, rest between sets and between exercises, rest between sessions and muscle groups, and how fast we do it. We, we do intensity, how much weight we have, or how fast we move the weight. The volume is just reps times sets plus kilos, and then we get the poundage out. So it's all about numbers, it's about days, it's about sessions, it's about hours, it's about throws, it's about lifts. It's the amount. You have to calculate everything out if you want to peak and forget it. If you don't have a training program and you want to be the Olympic champion, just forget it. Because how are you going to peak if you don't have a clue how, how the periodization works, it's all about rhythm. It's about rhythm in the training program because peaking is much more than physical peaking. Peaking here is technical peaking in the discus row that takes one second. Physical peaking in calculating out the volume and intensity in the lifts and the throwing and mental peaking to be able to do it under pressure. And it's even social peaking. How do you feel? Is your private life everything okay? So peaking is very often talked about only being physical peaking. It's much more than that. <clears throat> now you are in different sports. You have to Know the movement patterns in your sport and muscular involvement. What are you using in your sport? What you need, like I talked about earlier, strength, power, speed. The athlete, what athlete are you working with? Your training background. 
What kind of testing are you using in relation to strength, speed, power, flexibility, endurance? What's the goal? The exercise is like I told you. It's called multi-joint or multi-joint, double joint, Olympic weightlifting, neuromuscular, powerlifting, and that's what I call performance stuff. Single jump, rehab, pre-up exercises, single double jump, symmetry of balance, and multi-joint plyometrics jumps, medicine ball. We are using all your body. You have to know why we are doing this. Why, why are we using those exercises and why are they good? Training frequency, how is the status on the, on the athlete? Uh, other training, what they do, what events are they in, types of exercises and load. And here is an important thing, notice 48 to 72 hours, 48 to 72 hours, multi joint and double joint, and what was that? Olympic weightlifting and powerlifting. Those here is enough if we are not weightlifters. To do with 48 to 72 hours in between muscle groups or or uh, exercise group. That means all my success as a coach for the last 22 years has been done with same exercise group or muscle group twice a week. So we do clean or clean related things twice a week. We do squats twice a week, we do bench press twice a week, and put it in a system. We usually always have in the first of the daily session the Olympic lift, then the double joint or squats, bench, and deadlift, and then some assisted exercises or symmetry exercises. Volume and intensity, how do, you, how do you calculate this total number of lifts done in one exercise in one session? You can just totally calculate that all together in, in pounds. Intensity in speed or 100 months, and then you calculate from there. A number of sets, number of reps, and number of loads or kilos of pounds. On the tempo, I usually like to think that we always lift fast. But sometimes when we are building up a lot of muscles, then that's maybe not done that way because it's a lot of load. And then uh, the rest can be from 30 seconds, depending on if you're lifting a muscle mass, or to a total rest of many minutes in relation to speed and power. I use this old, old, um, old form of calculating out one rep max. How many reps can you do for five? 87 and a half, plus or minus half a percent, more or less. The only guy that has ever topped that is actually Daniel because he gets unbelievable craziness in the weight room sometimes when he get, can produce a lot of adrenaline. And uh, because of that, he can actually top this schedule. This fits usually very well. So when you do a, a one rep max, you do 100%. You can do 2% of 95 to 97, and then 92 and a half, maybe 93, probably not 93 and a half. And I use that always when I do the training book. In throwing, these are the way of training in relation to how you choose a periodization system. My original system was this linear periodization where this is the volume curve for the whole year, and then this is the 
intensity curve and composition curve. Then this is more like Pontaschuk, where you, where you uh, do the same for a certain amount of session, usually 30 to 50 sessions. And then you change and you get better and better. And then the block model here, where you only throw, only lift, only throw, only lift. And then a very little uh, intensity and volume regulations. Whatever you use, you have to choose a program. You have to choose how you're going to do it in relation to what sport you're doing. And uh, uh, I use this with Gert Kanter. And I use a combination of this and this with Daniel Stoll. It's more like this, 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 four weeks, four weeks, four weeks, four weeks, maybe. But with Gert Kanter, you always went down each week in relation to uh, volume and intensity. Each week down, intensity up. So I'm going to show you that later. It's all about how you use overload here as a volume curve to specificity to be able to peak here. It's pretty obvious you're not going to peak here, you're going to peak here. So this is a lot of lifting, a lot of throwing, a lot of volume. This is much less volume, much more throwing, much more specificity, and then uh, more speed and much less volume. You have to transfer, uh, like we have a discus, and then, then we have a tool. You have a tool here, Tommy? If you show the discus and the tool, and then you see here Gerd Kanter and Daniel Stoll, we are the lifting weights, we are throwing different things, and uh, we throw the discus, everybody knows the discus, but nobody knows really the tool. And if you come here and you show the tool, and you show the discus, and that's what we throw. Like we throw a two kilo discus, and then Daniel throws very often a 3.1 kilo tool, and then he throws the, that this amount of meters in relation to Gerd Kanter through the 2.5 kilo 75.50, Daniel through 3.1 72 50, but a little longer. That means that. Uh, this is the specific strength, and then the horsepower in the weight room is supposed to get those this tool and the discus to go further. That's pretty much the only strength we use, uh, specific strength in the in the throwing circles. And uh, he's going to show you later on how uh, how we do that. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I told him to talk Finnish because then he can talk shit about me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before we go into Gerd Cantor, last uh, picture, we have all everything in cycles. And these macro cycles are broken into four to twelve week cycles. It's it's four week cycles. Those meso periods are then broken down to meso cycles of four weeks, and then the meso cycles are then broken down to seven day week cycles, so like a week. And then the week cycles are broken down to three one or two one system. That's two days training, one rest, two days training, one rest, two days training, one rest, or two days training, one rest, three days training one rest. The day cycles are then broken down to daily sessions, and the daily sessions we train always twice a day. 